Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to have a look at those British hardback Star Wars annuals. So back in the day um, in the UK, um, are usually around Christmas time, you get a hardback annual, which would be a mixture of comic strips and puzzles and, and games and behind the scenes sort of features on your favourite TV shows and films. And uh, Star Wars was no exception. So they actually produced annuals for Star Wars, Empire, Jedi, the droids and even the Ewoks. So um, that's what we're going to have a look at today. So uh, sit back, relax, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let's get to it. Okay, so this is the very first British Star Wars annual, and it, in fact, it's marked number one. Now, it was published in the UK by Brown Watson. Now, that was a publisher um, who did several annuals around the period, but they certainly weren't the biggest ones, which was, uh, at the time, uh, World and World Distributors. Um, this is a pretty poor um, cover on reflection here, and... Um, I haven't had these books out for quite some time, but I do remember having this one or getting it as a present uh, when it was published. So when was that? Uh, 1978. 1978, this one. And I noticed uh, with interest, um, it's got a little British Home Stores, a BHS 125 sticker. So uh, British Home Stores thought it was worth uh, discounting it by 25p just to get it out the door. Um, now, this first one, like a lot of the annuals, um, it's a bit of a cross between the storybook or like a making of, but also uh, usually with the comic strips inside as well. And there was a, quite a, a range of um, comic strips that the uh, the publishers could pull on. So let's have a look at this one then. So, yeah, it does appear as if it's straight off the adaption of the, uh, the first film here. So... Uh, no actual surprises there. It's a shame, like a lot of British uh, comics um, of the period, it's in black and white. Although, with selected colour bits, it's probably just down to the price and keeping it at a certain level. This book was 150 when it was first published. So it looks like it's got the entire original movie for A New Hope. Quite good, but I would not say spectacular as a spectacular adaption, this one. Um, and the British colouring is awful, absolutely awful. And then straight back into black and white again, because we don't deserve colour. It's a bit like The Wizard of Oz. Starts in black and white, goes to colour, then it's back to black and white again. So uh, um, these bits are okay, though. I mean, nothing we've never seen before, but at the time it was quite good fun. Um, I suppose you don't see that, that photo much. Um, and I think that is because old Han Solo there has been superimposed into that photo. How awful. <laughs> and there we are. And then lastly, a little pro profile of Peter Cushion. So that, number one, is pretty much typical of, um, of a British annual. And these would have been produced at Christmas, m massive print runs, sold cheaply and given by your granny at Christmas um, as a stocking filler. That is exactly what British annuals are. Um, it's a peculiarity certainly of the UK. Um, I don't believe you've got these uh, in, in America, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, now, once again, as I said, we're not talking storybooks here. These are the annuals. There are separate Star Wars storybooks, of which there are many, and that will be the subject of another video. So this next one then is uh, Marvel Presents because it's reprinting Marvel Comics uh, strips. It's got a nice Carmen Infantino cover, which is a bit better than the last one. Um, and this is also published by Grand Dreams, so not Brown Watson, but this is like a sub, um, an offshoot of it. Now, this one is 175, and it was published the year after in 1979. So this one has even more like, awful, awful coloring with the pink, <laughs> a pink and brown sort of uh, comic strip. I mean, that is just the pits, let's be honest. Um, it's not even very clear. And that's because, of course, these have just been, um, the strips have been imported from the States and then they've put their own sort of spin on it. So not great at all. Um, these bits are okay. Um, the behind the scenes stuff is always all right. And uh, this is absolutely typical of British annuals at this time. Absolutely typical. And uh, although this one, I would say, is still a little bit better than the last one. And I see this isn't too bad. This is much better color. 
So why do they use that awful purple at the start of the, of the book? It's just crazy. And these, this is no adaption. This is just uh, straight issues from the USA Marvel comic, which we did get over here, Star Wars Weekly in the UK, but the strips were in black and white, so they weren't as good. But it was still nice to get them all the time. A little hint of The Empire Strikes Back. That very early logo there, so this would have been very, very early details of The Empire. A um, couple of stills. That was a, I remember that was an early still. Um, as a kid looking for anything on the Empire. Why I Wanted to Act by Carrie Fisher. Well, I'm not going to bore you with that. And then, oh, look, we're back to the horrible purple and pink um, comic strip again. So it's just awful. There we are, to the end. However, I would still say that was slightly better than the last one. Now, there is one last Star Wars annual, which was Marvel Stroke Grand Dreams. All right, so um, it says a Marvel publication. And around this time in the UK, um, other um, Marvel properties were being reprinted, uh, such as like Spider-Man to time with the TV show and the Hulk, all in the same sort of format. Um, other ones that they pub this publisher did were like the um, the Barnett Woman. Uh, they did the Professionals Annuals. There was a few around that. Uh, the Sweeney. So there was a few around that sort of uh, era, similar style. So this one here, um, this interestingly has not got a price on the inside cover, but it clearly says 1981. So this would be now the third uh, Star Wars annual. So. I would expect to see at least some references to um, The Empire Strikes Back in this one, once we get past the obligatory uh, four-color comic strip. I'm sure Star Wars um, comic aficionados will be able to tell me exactly where these comic strips have come from. And sometimes these are completely comic strip without any sort of factual pieces at all. And they were the cheapest of all to produce because they were just straight reprints from Marvel USA. So uh, yeah, these are still common infantry. So these are still quite early ones. Um, yeah, that's an Imperial probe droid. So there's a the little bit of Empire influence coming in. The artists had a bit more uh, subject matter to work with now. Yeah, that book is completely comic strip. So it's a little hardback comic strip. Obviously, that's the cover of one of the USA Marvels, which I have them all and we'll look forward to getting those out soon. Now, this next one then is the first of the Empire Strikes Back annuals. So this is Marvel Grand Dreams again, and uh, just takes the classic uh, image that's used on so many Empire Strikes Back uh, publications. £1.95 and published in 1980. And this is the straightforward uh, movie adaption. Um, now, in actual fact, this was the first way I actually read uh, the story of Empire Strikes Back, um, because I think the comic and the novel got released first of all, um, <clears throat> well before the uh, movie was released in the cinema. So that was how I, uh, that's how I read it, first of all. And yeah, this one here is basically the entire adaption of The Empire Strikes Back in hardback comic book form. And that's pretty nice, that actually, to be honest. Um, nice copy of that one as well. Now they did follow it up with the Empire Strikes Back annual, clearly marked number two. So the Empire Strikes Back annual number two. Now I'm just gonna pop these back a little bit so we got a little bit more room to play with. It's quite hard to get these big books in, in shot. There we are. So once again, I believe that was the cover of one of the um, USA issues of the comic. So this is 1981 again. £2.25 was the price. Now, is it is this all comic book style? Or is there anything else in it at all? Now you see, not even a few photos, which is such a shame, isn't it? I mean, I wonder if it was just because of the expense, maybe the copyright, uh, uh, who can tell? I mean, at least the actual reproduction of the comic strips is actually of a decent quality uh, compared to some of those other annuals. But even so, um, you'd expect at least something other than comic book strips. Now, then we're on to the first, I think this is the first Jedi annual. Um, there is a 
couple of these. So this is 275, published 1983. And this does indeed, once again, look like the hardback adaption of the movie. So yeah, it looks like it is. Yeah, right the way through. So this is another great way to actually own the comic book adaptions of the films um, in a more permanent sort of hardback form rather than the actual comics. Now, when this was released in America, it was a four issue limited series. Um, this is all those issues put together without adverts. And it is actually a fantastic um, adaption, this one. Um, I would, you know, I think it's probably the best of the three. Um, although I remember loving uh, Empire, of course, when it came out. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. So there's no no photos again. It's literally just the original movie in uh, comic strip form. Star Wars was still popular, so they released another follow-up annual because uh, the toys were still selling well. This is 1984, and this is, uh, by the face of it, comic strips again obviously not the movie but these are just the latest adventures that they've taken over uh, brought over rather from the american comics of marvel um so these are the later ones around issue 70 or 80 of the usa comic but still because at the time all we had were these um the british comic which often were in black and white this was uh this was great to see and i can imagine that's why these kept being published because they would be sellers now, this next one is a bit of a weird one. This is Star Wars Special Edition. Now, this was published by British Home Stores, BHS, and it was, uh, British Home Stores doesn't even exist anymore. However, um, that was a chain, uh, like a department store in the UK. And, you know, the bigger stores had their own little book departments like Marks and Spencer's used to do. And this special edition features Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So I'm guessing this is 19, yeah, this edition produced exclusively for BHS London and Star Wars copyright, Empire 1980, Return of the Jedi 83, published by Grand Dreams. It's the original publisher and it looks like what they've done, they've taken the bind ups of those original two annuals for the original adaptions of Empire and Return of the Jedi and put them into one massive hardback annual now the only thing i mean that is pretty epic but the only thing absolutely missing from that is if they could have done star wars in full color as well then you would have had all three of the original trilogy in one hardback book and then you would have had what i would consider gold however this one um is absolutely great the only thing i i don't like about this is the cover it's um not an artist i recognize although that signature is sort of familiar but um the likenesses aren't great and um yeah it's certainly not my favorite cover but the content is brilliant so full marks for that one now i've got two more to show you and they're ewoks so um I know I said at the start that we did have um, some droids annuals. I've got some droids hardbacks in my collection, but they're actually storybooks and they're not annuals. So they are going to be on another video in the future when I look at the uh, the British hardback storybooks. Um, in fact, I've actually got some foreign ones as well. So I've got this Ewoks annual and this one here, this uh, black covered one. Now, apologies for this. Uh, Obviously, after Star Wars and Jedi, um, you had the Ewoks and Droids animated series. And that's all that these are. Um, there was, once again, um, comic strips that the publishers could just reprint. Um, we're looking at 1988 for this one, for this Marvel book. So I'm not sure if this is the first one. We will have a little flick through. Um, I can't remember where I got these. I don't think I ever would have paid any sort of money for them because I really don't rate Ewoks memorabilia and I don't generally collect it, although I've got a few bits in the collection. Um, but it's sort of, well, it's a little bit more exciting than the Star Wars ones. But I think annuals did have to be a bit more value for money as time went on. So that one's 1988 stroke 89. And this one here, um, £3.25. Uh, this one's actually 85, so this would have been before that one. Now, I found these Ewoks annuals um, quite difficult to acquire. I don't think they have massive print runs. Um, but if you do collect the Star Wars annuals, these are perhaps essential um, to your collection um, because there's not that many annuals, and you can pretty much get these without spending a fortune and that's you know there's not many areas of star wars collecting where that's actually possible so these are nice they're from the time and uh i think they uh they are part of the star wars story 
So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that look at these British annuals. They certainly are uh, good fun to collect and there's not many of them. So uh, certainly uh, quite obtainable. Now, uh, don't forget, I have regular vintage Star Wars content on the channel every Friday with an unboxing every other Friday. So uh, do keep subscribed. Don't forget to give this video a like if you haven't already. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.